Here's a question from a very recent past exam. In fact, this is uh, the most recent past exams question. This is from fall 2013. And in fall 2013, they had only one short answer question, just like you guys have on your exam. And this was it. Now, this is a chapter 6 question. Um, how do I know it's going to be a chapter 6 question? Well, chapter 6 deals with probabilities, just like uh, just like chapter 7, eight, not 8, and 9. So all of those chapters have probabilities. It deals with the probability of an individual nominal outcome. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, and why is this stuff important? Well, first of all, whenever you see the word probability, like I said before, that could be chapter 6, 7, 8, or 9. So there's lots of different questions, or lots of different uh, chapter techniques that could be applied to probability questions. So I want to be able to narrow it down. Now, only chapters 6 and 8 handle individuals. Chapter 7 and 9, they deal with uh, samples. Samples of size 2, size 3, size 15, size 100 doesn't matter, as long as it's more than an individual, more than just one person. So I've narrowed it down to being probability, which is 6, 7, 8, or 9. Now when I see that, um, uh, the reason I'm saying it's an individual, they talk about uh, a single card being placed on the table, so I know that I'm looking at an individual outcome. So that could be chapter 6 or 8. But chapter 6 is the only one between those two that deals with nominal outcomes. Nominal just means that uh, you fit into a category or you don't fit into that category. Like what is the chance that somebody is male or female? What is the chance that a card is black or white? Those are, that's nominal outcomes, that's categorical outcomes. Chapter 8 deals with numerical outcomes, so some kind of numbers, like what is the chance that somebody is over five foot tall, or what is the chance that somebody scores more than 30 on a, on a quiz, or something like that. So this narrows it down to being chapter 6. Okay, so great. I know that I have a chapter 6 question from the fall 2013 exam, but uh, this particular question I'd say is, is uh, one of the most challenging chapter 6 questions that I've ever seen on an exam, and let me explain why. Let's uh, read through it and we'll keep track of what it is that, uh, that we have been given here. So it says a hat can, contains a number of cards with 30% white on both sides. So I've got um, the probability of, let's say, white and white. This is equals to 0 0.30. And then it says 50% black on one side and white on the other. So the probability of getting a black and white card is equals to uh, 0 0.50. That doesn't really look like a 50. There we go. And then finally it says 20% black on both sides. So the probability of black and black is equals to how much? Uh, 20%, so that's 0 0.20. Okay, so then it says the cards are mixed up. Then a single card is drawn at random and placed on the table. Okay, so this just means that uh, we're using random sampling which is not really all that interesting because every single question um, where there's a sample taken in your course, it has to be random samples. So uh, we can just ignore the fact that it's anything other than just we're taking a single card. We're taking a sample of one card. Now here they give us some information. They say if the top side is black, what is the chance that the other side is white? So um, the person who sent me this question uh, had a couple of ideas, but they knew that both of their ideas were wrong. And that's not the only person that sent me this question. A number of people have brought up this question. Um, people know what the right answer is, but they don't know how to get the right answer. This is a very counterintuitive question. Um, let me show you some of the, uh, the answers that I've seen people come up with. And they seem like reasonable answers. For example, you're asking, if the top side is black, what is the chance that the other side is white? Well, out of all of my cards, and you can see that these are 100% of the cards. This, uh, these probabilities come out to be 1.00. Out of all of the cards, 50% of them are black on the one side and one on the other side. So 
it's reasonable to think that the answer might be that uh, the probability is 0 0.50 or 50 percent. Now actually this is close to the right answer but this is not the correct answer. Now why is that not the correct answer? Well this ignores the fact that we've been given some information. It says if the top side is black. So there is more than just the chance of pulling out one of these cards here out of, randomly out of the entire group because we already know that one side is black. So technically that rules out these cards here. It rules out the white and white cards. So if it rules out the white and white cards, here's another popular answer. If I rule out the white and white cards, then I'm really only potentially dealing with these cards here. Black and white, also black and black. And if you think about it in your mind, if you're holding a card that's black on one side, it's either going to be black and white on the other side, or black and black on the other side. And we know the relative probabilities of those two. So if I know that I'm not dealing with a white and white card, because I'm looking at the fact that the top side is black, wouldn't it seem reasonable then that 0 0.50 out of 0 0.50 plus 0 0.20 would be my probability. In other words, out of all of these, what is the chance that I actually have the one that's black on the one side and white on the other? So 0 0.50 out of the total of 0 0.70. This is my total of 0 0.70 that could potentially be black on one side, maybe white, or maybe black on the other side. And so this comes out to be how much? This is uh, 50 over 70. So that's 0.5 divided by 0.7. This comes out to be 0 0.7143. Or in other words, 71.43%. Seems like a reasonable answer, but again, this is not the correct answer. So instead, let me show you. Um, let me show you how you do have to work this out. Um, now, fortunately, this is when I say that this is a very tricky Chapter Six question. This is one of the. Um, this is really one of the only kinds of tricks that they can pull with a chapter six question that isn't covered by the the techniques that I show you in in my uh, chapter six videos. I, I show you how to deal with any chapter six word problem, but this is a trick that uh, kind of challenges our understanding of probability a little bit. And this is about the only way that I've ever seen them form a trick question that uh, that doesn't follow a simple set uh, a simple set of steps uh, to. Um, to get to the solution of. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, let me clear a little bit of space here, and then we can get to work on our solution. Now, what's happening here, what's going to make the difference, is we have to consider when we're selecting a card and looking at just one side of the card, what are the probabilities when we're not when we're not focused on what the entire card looks like. For example, we have some uh, we have some white and white cards. The probability, oops, let me do this in white. The probability of white and white, that's equals to 0 0.30. And then there's also the probability of black and white. So black and white, that was equals to 0 0.50 and we have the probability of black and black, and that was equals to the remaining 0 0.20. Okay, so the problem here is it doesn't keep track of which face we may see first and which face we may see second. Because when you're looking at the given information, it says if the top side is black, because we've placed one card on the table, you're only looking at one side and you don't know what the other side is. So let's imagine these cards one side at a time. If I happen to choose my white and white card, then what could come first? And there's a 30% chance I might choose my white and white card, but what might come first? It's possible that I might choose white first, or, and that's a 50% chance, 
Or if I choose the white and white card, it's possible that I might choose the other white side first. There's no reason to believe that one side is going to happen more often than the other side, so there's an equal chance. That's all that I'm saying here, that when you choose the white, white card, you'll either get the one white side or the other white side. So now, this really doesn't, uh, this really doesn't make any, any difference here. It's 50-50. They're both white. So the outcome here would be that um, you choose white first. Oops, that looks funny. Let's do it like this. White first, and then white second. Here, you're once again going to have white first and white second. But what if you don't choose the white, white card? What if you don't get that 30% chance? What if instead you choose the black and white card and there's a 50% chance of that happening? Now, if that happens, here's where things become a little bit more interesting. There's a probability you could choose black first. There's a probability that you could choose white first. Now the chance of choosing black first is going to be 50% and the chance of choosing black first, or sorry, white first, is going to be the remaining 50%. Hopefully I said that right. So the chance of choosing black first is 50%, the chance of choosing white first is 50%. So I might get black first and then white second. I might get white first and then I might, and then I would naturally get black second. And finally, the last possible outcome is that I choose the um, this card that is black and black on both sides. And there was a 20% chance of that happening. And so, of course, both cards are the same. So I might get black first. I might get black, uh, black first. So I might get the one black side first. I might get the other black side first. But really, they're the same, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two of them. There's no reason to believe that um, there's more of a chance of getting one side over the other, so they're both 50-50. So this is going to be black first and then black second. The other outcome would be black first and black second. And so we've got every possible outcome that could occur here. And this keeps track of what you're seeing first and then what might happen second. And that's really important because we already know what we've seen first. So we're going to be able to rule some things out. Now, for example, I can rule out having seen white first. White first, white first. Um, there you go. Now I'm left with a situation where there is black first, black first, and black first. And the one that they're asking me um, about the probability of is this one here, black first and white second. So what is this probability? What is the chance of getting this particular outcome out of all possible outcomes? Well, this particular outcome is um, just choosing the black, white card, the, the black and white card, and then getting black first. So you can see that this is uh, half of a chance, a 50% chance that you choose that type of a card, and then there's a 50% chance that you choose that face first. So we're really just doing the multiplication rule here. We're working our way through a probability tree, just like how I show in my other videos how to, how to work through a probability tree. So this is going to be equals to 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which is equals to 0.25, but this is not yet my answer. I also have to work out these probabilities here, and let me show you why. It's going to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.5, that gives me 0 0.10. Down here I've got, if I follow this path, it's 0 0.2 times 0 0.5, that's 0 0.10. So it's possible, if I know, if I know for sure that I've chosen black first, which means I could have had this black first, this black first, or this black first. So it's possible that any one of these are what has happened. What is the chance that white came, will come second? Well, that means that I have to take this particular probability, this particular outcome, 
and see how does it compare to all possible outcomes. And I know it could be any one of these three outcomes, possibly, because they all have black first. So my probability that white will come second, given that I had black first, is going to be equals to 0.25 over the combined total of all of these probabilities, 0.25 plus 0.10 plus 0.10. So this is 0.25 over 0.45, and this gives me how much? This is 0.25 divided by 0.45, and it's 0 0.5556. So there you go. There's the answer to last February's only short answer question. It was a nasty chapter six question. Um, but again, a lot of these techniques, if you're if you're unfamiliar with some of the uh, the techniques that I've that I've done here, like going through the tree or the multiplication rule, all that sort of stuff, or even just conditional probabilities, I do all of that in, in the rest of my videos. Um, but this is how specifically you solve this question.